ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರಂ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ರಯೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಅಪಗತ ಪದಮಾನೈರಂತಿಮೋಪಾಯ ನಿಷ್ಠೈ ಅಧಿಗತ ಪರಮಾರ್ಥೈರರ್ಥ ಕಾಮಾನಪೇಕ್ಷೈ ನಿಖಿಲಜನ ಸುರಭಿರ್ನಿರ್ಜಿತ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಲೋಭೈ ವರವರ ಮುನಿಭೃತ್ಯೈರಸ್ತು ಮೇ ನಿತ್ಯ ಯೋಗ we continue with the study of the mumukshu padi we are in the fifth uh, churnikaya sutra unfortunately I, am, i have not been able to prepare this slide i hope you will bear with me uh, from next week onwards i will try my best to take some time off for this purpose <clears throat> so we were studying this sutra samsari hal tangalayam ishwaranayam marande ishwara kaingariyattayum ilande ilando mingira ilamum innikke ಸಂಸಾರ ಮಾಹಿರ ಪೆಂಗಡಲ್ಲೇ ವಿಳಿಂದ ನೋವು ಪಡ ಸರ್ವೇಶ್ವರಂತನ್ ಕೃಪೆಯಾನೆ ಇವರು ಹೆಳ್ ತನ್ನೆಯರಿಂದ ಕರೆಮರಂ ಶೇರಂ ಪಡಿ ತಾನೇ ಶಿಷ್ಯನು ಮಾಯ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯನು ಮಾಯ್ ನಿಂದ್ರೆ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರತ್ತೈ ವಿಳಿಟ್ಟರುಳಿನಾನ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಲಿಟ್ರಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಹೆಣ್ ತಂಗಳೆಯಂ ಈಶ್ವರನೆಯಂ ಮರಂದೆ so samsari hel means those who are the bonded souls like all of us they having forgotten about their own souls as well as the supreme lord that is lord narayana they have forgotten in the sense they have no realization of the soul of course now do i not know that i exist ರಾಮಾನುಜಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಾಷ್ಯಂ ನ ಕೋಪ್ಯೇವಂ ಪ್ರತ್ಯೇತಿ ನಾಮಸ್ಮೀತಿ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಡೌಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಟು ವೆದರ್ ಐ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಐ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ದೋ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸಿವ್ಲಿ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಸ್ ದಟ್ the main cause for bondage is dehatma abhimana or our having a feeling that this body itself is a soul it is very much true that all of us think that the body itself is a soul because we say i am fat i am thin etc but we also have an inkling when we say my body it means i is different from the body we know that to a to a particular extent 
So we have an inkling within ourselves that there is a soul that is beyond this body. However, we have no realization of the pure soul that is dissociated from the body. Therefore, we don't have the Swaswarupa Jnana or Atma Swarupa Jnana, which is what is mentioned here as they have forgotten these bonded souls. They have forgotten themselves as well as the Supreme God. In the sense, we don't have, now a person might know, I, have, I believe in God, I go to the temple and worship Him. So how do you say that I don't know what God is? Who the Supreme Lord is? I believe my, my guru used to tell a very beautiful, narrate a very beautiful instance. So all of us go to the temple and we'll say, when we see the beautiful iconic form of the Lord, we say, oh, Lord is so beautiful. He has been decorated such a in such a wonderful manner, he is looking so resplendent and all those things. So we, really we, with a open mind and with a wholehearted outlook, we actually say, we, we worship the Lord and we really feel happy. So after we come home and after about half an hour or one hour, suppose somebody asks, you or any person for that matter. Have you seen God? So, a normal person who, has, who will say, even if you ask me, I will say no. So then if you realize, ah, just half an hour back, you just was mentioning, you were mentioning, you went to see, the, you went to the temple and you saw the Lord, he is so resplendent with all the garlands, with all the alankaras and all those things. Oh, that God is it? Okay, okay, yes, yes, I have seen <laughs> You will say like that. That means, though we believe in God and though we have, we are favorably disposed towards the God, we have some amount of devotion, etc. In the heart of hearts, we are not ready to accept that the archa iconic form is the Lord himself. That is why we would say, oh no, how can I see? I have not seen you. Say that. that means not that it is, we don't have belief or something like that. Because the archa form has to ultimately lead us to the vision of the Lord within ourselves. Because specifically the Shastras say, Na maamsa chakshuhu abhivikshate tam. Though we consider the archa form as the incarnation of Lord Himself, the archa form has certain limitations. Therefore, ultimately what has to happen, the archa form immediately because when, for example, uh, the Alvar called Tirupan Alvar. He had never had the darshan of the Lord. But as soon as he had the, the, uh, came to have the darshan of Lord Ranganatha, immediately within himself he had a divine experience. He doesn't talk about Ranganatha, but he talks about some other form of the form of Krishna who is sleeping on a banyan leaf. And then he says, And he actually, literally, actually, he gives up his life. It is not written in those terms, but he said he, he actually merged into the God or something like that has been given. So this has to lead to, that is why even the Alvar say, Nenjanum Mukkad Nail Kaanum Nirvahal, whether it is Shemar Bhagavatam or Shri Bhashim or any other work for that matter, the Upanishads. The ultimate experience has to happen within us, not outside of the body. And not through these eyes, but from the eye that, from the, through the inner eye it has to happen. Which is very unequivocally or categorically stated. Therefore, Tangalayam, Ishwaranayam, Marandi. So there we have forgotten about the Lord in the sense. We have not had 
the vision of the Lord as it has to happen. Ishwara kainkariyatayam midande. So the kainkariya that is done using after the after one has the vision of the Supreme Lord is the real kainkariya. So that is why we differentiate between sadhya bhakti and sadhana bhakti. So the bhakti that is the cause of our attaining the knowledge of the Supreme Lord is called sadhana bhakti. And once we have the vision of the Supreme Lord, then actually the process of bhakti starts, which is known as sadhya bhakti. Therefore, <clears throat> it is said, Ishwara Kain Kariyatta Yumidanta. Now I may say, no, I am wearing this thing, I do Thiruvaradhanam every day. I do this, I do that, and so many other things. Then how, how can so, uh, Pradhoka Acharya say, Ishwara Kain Kariyatta Yumidanta? We have given up the servitude unto the Lord. The answer is, the real bhakti starts only after we have had the vision of the Supreme Lord. So, is the bhakti or is the kainkarya, servitude unto the Lord that is being done now, is it a waste? No, definitely it's not a waste. It's definitely it should be done. But the real kainkarya, Ishwara kainkarya starts after one has the vision of the Supreme Lord. So, that cannot happen now. Therefore, Pralagoka Acharya says, Ishwara kainkarya tayumirandu. And then, Irando Min Gira Irava Min Nikke. And all of us bonded souls do not regret that we, are, we don't have an opportunity to serve the Lord in that manner. Have we ever thought, even for once, oh, every moment I am doing something else, I am losing the opportunity to be of some service to the Lord. We don't think like that. We are extremely happy doing all things other than Ishwara Kankari. But of course, later, when we take the case of the Advars or the Acharyas, there comes a state that whatever they do becomes Ishwara Kankari. But in this case, it's not so. That's why he says, Ishwara Kankari Yumirande. We don't have even a small amount of regret that we have missed an opportunity to be of service to the Lord. And therefore, what has happened? Samsara Mahira Perimkada Lire no Pada. So we are all actually, we have literally fallen into a huge ocean called Samsara. And <clears throat> no, but we are continuously experiencing different types of um, miseries or unhappiness. Therefore, seeing that these people, these souls who are bonded, if I don't grace them or if they do not become the recipients of my grace, then there is no chance that they can be redeemed. Therefore, Sarveshwaran Tan Kripayale, by His Divine Grace, Tane Shishya Numaya Acharya Numaya Nandi Tirimantrattai Vili Tarudinan. He actually, Vili Tarudinan, it literally means He brought to light the Tirumantra, being He Himself taking the form of both the Acharya and the Shishya. Here in the commentary, there is a detailed account of what are the different types of Dukkha. I mentioned in the last class that Dukkha is of three types. In our local parlance in Kannada and Tamil and many other languages, we use the word Tapatriya in a very general sense. It is extensively used even People who do not have an inkling about what it really means, they say, oh, today I had to encounter a lot of tapatri. But the real purport of the word tapatriya is that it is of three types of dukkhas, or three types of miseries. 
which is actually very well enumerated in the Vishnu Purana. Very quickly, I will just uh, uh, go through because it's very interesting. Adhyatmiko vai dvidaha shariro manasastatha. We know that the dukkha is of three types, namely Adhyatmika dukkha, Adhidaivika dukkha, and Adhibhautika dukkha. And uh, even I, I feel confused what is Adhyatmika, what is Adhidaivika. Adhyatmika means that which concerns the Atman or the soul. That much we understand. Adi Bhautika is that which concerns the Bhutas or the elements, namely the earth, water, air, um, fire, and also the ether. These are known as the Panchamaha Bhutas, as we all know. And Adi Daivika is that which occurs on account of the demigods or on account of some aspect that is beyond our control. Of course, all these are beyond our control, specifically with regard to the demigods. That is how it is generally uh, explained. But in Vishnu Purana, they have very clearly explained, and that is uh, mentioned here in the commentary, which says, Adhyatmiko vai dvivitaha shariro manasastatha. Shariro bahubhir bheraihi vidyate shuyatanta saha. So, Adhyatmika dukkha is of this, the two types, that is physical and mental. And physical is of many types. Shiro, Roga, Pratishaya, Jwara, Shula, Bhagandharaihi, Gulmara, Shwayatu, Shwasa, Satchadhyari, Bhirat, Satchadhyari, Bhi, Anekatha, Katha, Akshi, Roga, Apisara, Kushta, Angamaya, Samgitaihi, Vidyate, Dehajastha, Tapaha, Manasam, Shrotumaraihi. See, so all the different diseases have been enumerated here. Of course, they have different names in modern parlance in the uh, allopathic uh, system of uh, medicine. So here they have mentioned it in a different way. I will not go into that. Then, which are the manasa dukkhas that, that is mentioned as follows. Kama krodha bhayatvesha lobha moha visharajaha Shoka, Suya, Avamana, Irksha, Matsari, Ari, Mayastatha, Manasopi, Vijasheshtha, Tapo, Bhavati, Naikatha. This is very important in today's context because it has been found out in modern medicine also from what I understand that the mental issues play a very, very important role on our body and its well wellness. So, <clears throat> the Ayurveda specifically says that when a particular rasa is enjoyed, this is a very important aspect that many people are not aware about. So, we, we call, we have nine rasas in the Indian uh, system of knowledge, namely Shringara, Veera, Karuna, Adbhuta, Hasya, Bhayanakaha, Bhibhatsa, Raudraucha, Rasaha. There are nine rasas. Shringara is uh, that uh, concerns love. Love means love a, a person has for his beloved or her beloved. Then Veera Rasa, I think you can understand. I don't uh, uh, immediately recall the exact equivalents. Shingara, Veera, Karuna is compassion. Hasya is humor. Bhayanaka is horror. Bhibhatsa is that which puts us away. Bhibhatsa. Raudra is, uh, I think there are, there are slight differences. Raudra is also little bit nearer to horror, but it is quite, it is well defined. And finally, the ninth rasa is Shanta rasa. So when, when you see a drama, for example, particular types of neurons are fired in the brain, which will actually act on your psyche and also bring you to a particular mood. For example, if you see somebody killing somebody, we find that many a times our heart rate increases. We ourselves can find uh, the heart beating increases. So in English, we say a chill ran down his spine or something like that. 
I think you are well aware of that expression. So, in the ancient system of Indian drama, the Narati Shastra and also in the Shastra that uh, where uh, the dramas were being enacted, these used to be these techniques used to be used in such a way that there will be total equilibrium of the brain. So, <clears throat> how to um, very balanced dimension these things and ultimately make the person <clears throat> attain fulfillment. So, it says, Matyam Bhinnaru Cher Janasya Bahudha Api Ekam Samara. So each person, one person does horror, one person does uh, shantarasar, serenity, another person does shringara very much, depending upon his age and all those things. But the Natya, that is the Bharatanatya or the system of dance, as well as Nataka, the drama, both of these would cater to hues of all people, or people of all hues. And then ultimately take them to the state of Brahmananda. So it is said that that rasa the the it is said that Brahma Swada Sahodara. So when you see the different uh, enactments of drama, I'm not going to that, that's a very big topic. It's like an ocean in itself. Because in Sanskrit drama, especially in the Dramaturgy as the field of drama is called. Specifically, they have mentioned that certain things should never be shown on stage. That include one person killing another person and intimate scenes of two lovers, whether they are husband and wife or just their <coughs> love each other, then eating and having a uh, physical fights and all these things, things like these are all prohibited. Because they create bad influences on the brain which will ultimately defeat the purpose of the drama itself. Therefore, but you have all these events and they will be mentioned in what is known as Vishkambhaka. That is, they will be narrated by one character to another character. Oh, it happened like this. So suppose the Rama and Rama, the uh, dialogue between Rama and Ravana on the battlefield is to be enacted. They will enact that in a very beautiful manner in which people realize the real nature of Rama who is the Supreme Lord himself. But the actual killing of Ravana doesn't occur on stage. It will be, it will be mentioned in the next scene, before the next scene in a sub... Uh, in a, way, so a scene that occurs in between, where is where there is a dialogue. After this happened, drama killed Ravana. They will say that. So it's a big, big, big topic. Why I am mentioning this is <clears throat> these things will actually satiate the instincts of the person in a very nice, in a proper manner, and lead him to the ultimate. Uh, what is known as Brahma Swada Sahodara, it will lead him to a very exalted state of mind, which will ultimately take him to the Supreme Lord himself. That is why in all the dramas, in Sanskrit especially, or in Indian culture, either it is Rama or Krishna or Dushinta or somebody who is a highly evolved person who is perfect in all respects. So, most of the dramas you take, the hero is always the best. He is, of course, they have mentioned several types of heroes and all those things. A, as I said, it's a huge ocean in itself. But ultimately, it is said that this is a technique for a person to have the experience of the divine through the different rasas. And then you have shed rasas as far as food is concerned. So, a great guru very beautifully narrated that, uh, this aspect. He said, for the body you have to have nine rasas. For the mind you have to have nine rasas. For the body you have to have shed rasas. That is, uh, 
मधुर अम्ल लवण कटु कषाय पित्त भेदा सो फूड प्लेस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन द लाइफ ऑफ अ डिवोटी एंड व्हाट टाइप ऑफ सात्विक फूड ही हैज टू हैव हाउ बैलेंस्ड इट शुड बी ऑफ कोर्स ऑल द शेट्रसस दैट इज सावर अस्ट्रिंजेंट एंड all the other i am not able to recall the exact translations of these six so the rasas play a very 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 important role and these rasas are very closely associated with the kama krodha lobha moha etc which is mentioned very clearly by lord krishna in his uh, bhagavad gita where he says when when he mentions about uh, rajasahara he says yeah कट्वलवणाुष्णतीक्ष विदाहि आहारा राजसेष्ठा दुखशोक आमय खुदा सो दि फुड्स दट टेक् पीपल टेक् एस्पेषली दि नॉन् सात्वि फुड मेनी टाइम्स कन्सिस्टिंग आफ् मीट कन्सिस्टिंग आफ् आनियन गार्लिक विच इज हईली राजसिक इन नेचर एंड सेवरल अदर फुड्स दट इन इंडियन मोस्ट आफ दि टाइम टूडे कंस्यूम in the street corners and other places in hotels etc they induce mood swings as they are called in today's parlance which will lead them to lot of things so they he says ahara ha rajasasyeshta dukha shoka amaya prada they induce misery they induce sadness they induce uh, different types of mental and physical illnesses etc so this is very important so he says the manasa roga sir kama krodha bhaya dvesha dobha moha vishadaja shoka asuya avamane ekshya matsarya adi mayastha so it can come from discontentment it can come from unhappiness that is misery it can come from envy and so many other things so manaso dvija dvija क्षी <coughs> uh birds manushya adhyayi and other human beings and pishacho uraga rakshasai so as i mentioned on what we call as the devayonis or the demigods like pishachas uh, ghosts uragas and rakshasas and also sarisrupa adhyayi that occurs on account of the sarisrupa uh, refers to lizards etc so it might be a snake or uh, other types of lizards hmm? scorpion or things like that sarisrupa adhyesha varanam chayate ta adhi bhautika this is known as adhi bhautika dukha and sheetoshna varsha ambu vaidyuta adi samudbhava tapo dvija varashreshtha kadhyate cha adhi daivika so adhi daivika dukha is it might be things like uh, cyclones earthquakes floods and uh, nowadays you have tsunamis and <coughs> uh, from uh, the lightning so these are all known as adhi daivika dukhas so these are the three types of miseries that a human being is afflicted with so the supreme lord takes great compassion towards that he says sarveshwaran tan kripayale and i have explained this shloka evam samsruti chakrasthe bram bhramyamane svakarmati jeeve dukha kule vishnoho kripa ka upajayate so he very it is very beautifully says so there is no end for this cycle of birth and deaths and in each birth we experience several 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 types of these miseries so when the supreme lord sees 
us, the bonded souls, he comes to have some compassion. So he says, Ivar hal tanna yarind karamaram sherum padi. So it is mentioned, Samsararnava magnana vishaya sakta jetasam vishnupodam vinananyat kinchirastu karayanam. Very beautiful pramanas, ashtokas are explained in this context. So for those who are fallen into the ocean of samsara, there is only one boat or one ship that can help them cross the ocean of this samsara which is filled with different types of tapas or dukkhas. And that boat is none other than Lord Vishnu himself. <clears throat> so the Lord manifests himself in the form of a boat for us to climb onto it and then reach the other side of this ocean of misery. And then it says, Tane shishya numaya acharya numai ninni So naranarayana nai ulahattanat shingamai virittavan engirapadiye naranarayana rupena avataritti naranadan shishya numai narayana nanadan acharya numai ninrengai So he incarnated both as the shishya and acharya. The Naranarayana Upakhyana will be explained later also in this in the in this work itself. I will not go into the details now. And also it has been mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam in detail. So I will explain it in the subsequent class. So he actually incarnated both as the Shishya and Acharya. Why did he incarnate as the Shishya? That will be explained in the subsequent sutra. So I will not explain it now. And then he says, Tiri mantrattai veli tarudinam indra sakara shastra sangrahamai andha shastra taat pariyaman artha panchakattayam suspashtamaha pratipadiyya nirkum tiri mantrattai prakashipit tarudinam yengai So it is, the literal meaning of this sutra is he actually <coughs> revealed the Thiru Mantram or the Ashtakshara Mahamantra to the um, to the entire mankind at large. So here <coughs> a question is asked as to why not he why did why is it mentioned that he revealed the Thiru Mantra? Why is the word revealed used in, used in this context? So Swami Manavad Mahamani very beautifully explains this. Just as the Vedas have not been authored by any person, even the Tirumantram has not been authored by any person. It's an eternal mantra that exists in creation from, from time immemorial and it shall exist for, for the future to come. So there is no question of its coming into existence or losing its existence, etc. So that is why when we call the, when we actually speak about the rishis, we call them as mantra drashtaraha rishaya. One who saw the mantra or one to whom the mantra was revealed. <clears throat> so even this Thiru mantra was revealed to Lord Narayana and he explained it to Nara. So the mantra is actually revealed to the Acharya and the revealed mantra is explained to the disciple. Therefore, it is specifically stated that this, these mantras have no authorship just like the Vedas. So it is with this intention, Swami Pradilok Acharya has used the word Veli Tarunina. He actually revealed it and propagated it to the world. So it's not like he has authored this mantra because mantras actually, like the Vedas, cannot be authored. They are called as apaurusheya in Sanskrit language. That means they have not been authored by any person. So to explain it very briefly, when we talk about the Ramayana or Mahabharata or the Srimad Bhagavatam, 
it is specifically mentioned in the introduction of ramayana that brahma came to the ashram of valmiki and said you shall hereafter author the ramayana so authoring means first the person has to think about it then he has to actually uh, prepare the text and then write it of course writing is not an important pa pa portion of authoring because it might be written by a scribe also as in the case of mahabharata so authoring means you have to think about it and give it a specific shape whereas when it is revealed to you you don't think about it at all how to write this etc the entire we call it as in sanskrit we call it as anupurvi anupurvi means the specific arrangement of the letters so <clears throat> every mantra is actually a combination of letters but it's a unique combination that makes it a unique mantra therefore it is not authored but it is revealed that is why as i mentioned just now it is mantra drashta arha rishiya it means the mantras were revealed they saw the mantras rather than they wrote the mantras or they created the mantras so that is what pilloka acharya says here and then he continues with the next chornika which says shishyanai nannade shishya nirakku mirippu baattar ariyamayale attayarivikke kaha so of course we require an acharya to teach us something and it is in the fitness of things that he is born as an acharya why is he incarnating as a shishya also why is he incarnating as a disciple also is the main question that may come to the mind of the listeners so he gives the answer here anal acharyana it acharyana in veliyittaruli vidamayado shishyana ennadu edirkaha vennaruli cheyirar shishyana enna todangi the literal meaning of this sutra is like this shishyana ennadu shishya nirakkumirappe naattar ariyamayale atte arivikkaha the specific reason that he incarnated as the disciple also is that he wanted to show to the people at large how a shishya has to actually behave so he behaved as the model shishya or model disciple and then he learned the tirumantram or ashtakshara mahamantra from his acharya named narayan many times we say in our uh, day to day life a person who lead, who knows how to follow shall know how to lead i think you have heard about this saying so only a person who knows how to follow can actually lead because if you don't know how to follow then how will you lead because you cannot actually teach your followers what following is all about so it's very important that you should know how to follow first and then only you can become a leader so becoming an acharya would be easier <laughs> than becoming a shishya actually so he says nattar ariyamayale atte arivikkaha so he actually specifically states since people at large would not know how a shishya has to believe uh, behave the lord himself incarnated as a model shishya or model disciple and showed to the world how a shishya has to behave and this is well explained by manavala mami in his commentary by quoting three important verses very very important verses which are as follows aastiko dharma shirascha शीलवान वैष्णव श्रुति गंभीर चतुरोधीर शिष्यते शरीर वसु विज्ञान वास कर्म गुणान सून गुरुवर्थम धारेस्त स शिष्यो नेतर स्मृत दिस आर टू वेरी फेमस श्लोक वेरी फेमस वर्सस् 
And the third verse, he directly quotes from Vedanta Deshika, which is as follows. Sad buddhihi sadhu sevi samuchitata jaritaha tattva bodha bilashi shushrushuhu tyaktamanaha pranipatana paraha prashnakala pratikshaha shanto dantaha anasuyuhu sharanam upagataha shastra vishwasa shadi shishya prapta pariksham krita vida bhimatam Extremely wonderful shloka, which actually summarizes all the aspects that a shishya has to have if he has to be a model shishya, if he has to be called as a shishya. And before I go to the explanation, I would like to mention one important thing. Off late, since uh, Sri Keshav Das Prabhu is specifically interested in this issue I am mentioning, that people glorify the differences or the differences of opinion between the Tannachari Sampradaya and the Vatagali Sampradaya. But specifically it is to be noted that Manavana Mamuni, though in this context he has not mentioned about the author, in several places he quotes Vedanta Deshka with the, by saying Abhiyukta Shunduvar. Our elders mention like this. Our elders mention as follows. And Vedanta Deshika, when he quotes Pillai who was his contemporary, he also specifically mentions that this is the opinion of our contemporaries with great respect, without even an iota of disrespect. So this is what Sri Vaishnavism is all about. Though there might be some minor differences of opinion with regard to certain things, that is not overclouded, that is actually overclouded by the mutual respect. Because if he does not have respect for a fellow, fellow Shri Vaishnava, how can he be called a Shri Vaishnava? So, this is very important to be noted. So, I will very clearly, actually, this shloka has to be explained in probably three to four hours, but very quickly I will explain it. So, Sadbud, these are the characteristics a Shishya is necessarily to be endowed with. So, the first one is Sadbuddhi. He should have a very, very, very good intellect. So, Durbuddhi should not be there. <laughs> then, Sadhu Sevi. He should engage in the service of good people. But where to get good people, that is another big problem, that is let it be. Then, Samuchita Charitaha, he should be of a good character. He should not be of a loose character. So, character means all the things, it does not uh, refer necessarily to being, uh, that is, having illicit relationships, etc. That is also included. So, Samuchita Charitaha, unless he has a good character, he cannot become a good Shishya. Then, Tattva Bodha Abhidash. He should have a very, very deep and burning desire to know what the reality is. Not see or feel happy if he understands the surface of the matter. So, he should be extremely interested in knowing the Tattva or the reality. That means, he should have a burning desire to actually have the vision of the Supreme Lord. Unless that is that is there, he cannot be called the proper Shishya. And Shushru Shuhu, he should have the capability to listen well. Many a times when we go for an interview or something like that, especially in today's uh, world of computers and all those things, when teamwork is very important, they ask, is he a good listener? So listening is a very important character character that we all have to inculcate because many a times we feel when somebody is telling something, we feel we already know and we So, Shushru Shuhu. That is one meaning. Another meaning is Shushru Shah means he should be ready to serve the Acharya. In any manner, the Acharya which is interested. 
then Tyaktamanah. He should have given up his ego to the maximum possible extent. So he should be an egoless person. Because unless he gives up his ego, he will not be able to become the grace of the Acharya. This is very important. Of course, all these things are very important. This is very, very important. Shushru, Shuru, Tyaktamanah. And only if he is Tyaktamanah, he gives up his ego. He will be able to pranipatana paraha. He should always be ready to prostrate before the Acharya. So today many a times when I see young children, in the Indian context I am mentioning, of course, that practice does not, does not exist in West, in Western culture. Many a times children, when they are asked to prostrate before elders, they don't do that. But when we were brought up, when we were young, the first thing when an elderly person used to come to our house, they would say, please prostrate. So it is well found that if you are not ready to prostrate, that means your ego is highly boosted. And you are not ready to <coughs> accept the supremacy of another person. So in Nyaya Shastra, we actually analyze what is this Namaskara or what is the prostration. It is mentioned, it is very beautifully analyzed in this manner, which says, Svavadhika utkrishto utkrishtatva prakaraka jnana anukula vyapara. It is mentioned in a technical jargon, in, which is unique to Nyaya Shastra. I will not mention that. But it says, when you bow to somebody, it means that you accept that he is superior to you. So accepting the superiority of another person is very, very, very important as far as the spiritual field is concerned. My guru used to say, so if you find some many a times what happens, in our sampradaya we have found, in our guru parampara we have found many a times that the shishya would excel the acharya. So even in the Guru Parampara Prabhavan, a very beautiful instance is mentioned where Periyanambi or Mahapurna, as he is known as in Sanskrit, when he once was seeing Ramanuja Acharya, his disciple from close quarters, it is mentioned that he prostrated before Ramanuja Acharya. Then Ramanuja Acharya was taken aback, what is this Guru is prostrating before me? So he said, you are actually throwing me to a very heinous uh, hell or naraka. Then Periyanambi said, no, no, I did not prostrate you. I prostrated to my Acharya, Yamuna Acharya, whom I saw in you. So it is very important that a person gives up his ego and accepts other superior. And in our tradition, we see that Many a times the Guru would accept the superiority of his Shishya. And also in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, a very beautiful concept is there, where it is mentioned that the five earlier generations of Ramanuja Acharya, the Guru generations, they attained fulfillment due to the Tirumudi Sambandham of Ramanuja Acharya. Because they were associated with the head of Ramanuja Acharya, which prostrated to their feet, they attained fulfillment. So the predecessor Acharyas attained fulfillment because they were associated with the relationship of the Tirumudi or the head of Ramanuja Acharya, who used to prostrate to them. And the subsequent generations, they attained fulfillment due to, the, due to their having relationship with the divine feet of Ramanuja. So, the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is unique because such concepts do not exist in any other uh, Sampradaya. Once, when my Guru, Sri Uve Kottimangalam Vardhacharya Swami was questioned, see, he, uh, by some person who was actually making fun of this instance, and he said, oh, see your Sampradaya, you say, 
a person attains fulfillment due to his shishya because his shishya is prostrated to him how is it possible to accept this then immediately my acharya replied do you accept that it is the son who gives liberation to the father because specifically the shastras mention punnam no narakate prayate iti kutta do you accept the indian shastras or not then they say yes yes we accept it if it is mentioned in the shastras why how can we deny it similarly though the son is much younger and he all he has to always prostrate to the father but since a very evolved soul has born has been born as a son and by that son the father gets liberation similarly ramanuja acharya was such an exalted acharya that by his prostrating to his acharya that acharya became liberated why is it not possible this is the answer given by me so in the field of spirituality it is very important that suppose a fellow devotee has become highly evolved a fellow devotee has was newly come into the fold has become highly evolved over a period of time then this person has to prostrate before him even though he is much junior to him in other respects therefore prani patana paraha he should always be ready to give up his ego and accept the superiority of his fellow devotees of his acharya in all respects because many a times we we see in the world that people may talk about their his acharya the acharya he may not so he may know some uh um, scriptures and other things but i know much more than what my acharya knows in several other aspects if he feels like that then he is unfit to be a shishya so and then prashna kala pratiksha he should wait for the opportune moment to ask the questions that he has with regard to the field of scripture so the questions should be asked in the right at the right moment and in the right situation this is very very important because he has to see the state of the mind of the acharya that is is he ready to give the answer so it, it is akin to the milking of a cow so the cow cannot be milked at any time that the person wants milk it should be milked in the right time at the correct time when it actually there is a saying in kannada i don't know what to say in english so after the uh, calf is first made to partake of a little milk then it should be tied then the milk should be procured and once again the calf has to take the milk so that is how it is said so it should be vatso chishta it should be the left over of the calf's uh, calf taking milk otherwise the milk is not pure and it should not be pure. but today even in india even in rural areas where people are supposed to know the rules just like in the west they immediately separate the calf which is a huge sin according to indian shastras so prashna kala pratiksha in shanta ha danta ha these are two very important things shanti shama ha and dama shanta he should always be serene danta ha he should have total control over his inner and outer senses this are all to be explained in great detail but i will not go to it now and anasuyu this is a very very important quality that shishya has to inculcate that he should not have any envy for his fellow uh students or his uh, classmates or uh, batchmates or whatever you hello shri vaishnavas because many a times we see that even even i have experienced and many of us might have experienced when in a class the guru praises another student we feel envious so asuya is a very very dangerous quality because my guru used to explain it as ूयते 
nothing good will come to him. That is why it is called as Asuya. It is the most, most, most dangerous <coughs> bad quality a person can have. So, at all costs, it should be <coughs> done away with. And this is especially true when we are students, when we have many fellow students. Because we feel when the Guru praises another student to a great extent, we feel envious about him. We may feel that the Guru is partial to that person. He is having some bias towards me and he is, therefore he is not praising me and he is praising the other person. So, Shantaha, Dantaha, Anasuyu, Sharana Mupagataha. And he has to totally surrender to the Guru. Unless he totally surrenders, <laughs> nothing will happen in Sydney. Nothing good will happen. So if he feels, of course, my Guru has told me like that, but I feel this is a better path, then he cannot be called as a Shishya. So he should have what we call as implicit obedience, that he should, he is surrendered to the Acharya, and whatever the Acharya says, he should follow that, without questioning him. So he don't support him. And Shastra Vishwasa Shali, he should have total belief in the Shastras. Unless he has total belief, he, once again, nothing good will occur to him. He can never progress in the spiritual path. So somebody might, uh, of course it is mentioned in the Shastras, who can do all these things, who can follow all these things. They have mentioned it in those days. Probably they were in their 70s or 80s and they have mentioned it. Can I follow it when I am 30 years old or 25 years old? They have mentioned it in different contexts. That is not the real. That should not be the attitude. If a person is not able to follow what is mentioned there, he should feel, oh, it is my, it is the result of my sins that I am unable to follow the Shastras. Or he should feel so bad about himself. Oh, what is that sin? that is causing me to actually not have total belief in the Shastras. That is how he should think and gradually he should develop belief in the Shastras. So, Shishyaha Praptaha Parikshaam and then he should be ready to undergo any examination that the Acharya does with regard to him. So, if the Acharya tries to examine the Shishya, he should not feel bad. He should welcome it with open, open arms. In another context, it is also mentioned that the Shishya also should examine the Acharya. That's a different thing. But, and the Acharya should not feel bad if the Shishya examines him. That is the greatness of the Acharya. But the greatness of the Shishya is, he should not feel diffident or he should not feel bad if the Acharya examines him with regard to him, with regard to his character, with regard to his personality, with regard to his knowledge or any other aspect of that. And then Parikshaam Krutavid Abhimatam Tattvataha Shikshin. And the Acharya has to thus examine the Shishya and see that all these qualities. So it is both the responsibility of the Acharya and Shishya. It is not the responsibility of any one person. That is why in the Vedas, it is specifically mentioned, Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bhunattu. So in the beginning of the class, both the Acharya and Shishya are supposed to recite this wonderful mantra. Sahana Vavatu, let the Supreme Lord protect both of us together. Sahana Bhunattu, together. We are in, embarking on this journey of knowledge. Saha viryam karavavahi. Sir, we are actually trying to achieve together something great. So, it, it is concerning basically the having the vision or the Paramatma Sakshatkara as it is mentioned. So, that Paramatma Sakshatkara is the responsibility of both the Acharya and Shishya. Not the, so, it's not like the Guru has Start it one day and it is left to the Shishya. So, Kritavid Abhimataha Shishtatvata Shikshaniya. Very beautiful uh, verse that is mentioned by Vedanta Deshka in this Nyasa Tilaka or Nyasa Vimshati. Uh, 
which is very honor we quoted uh, with great honor by manavana mamuni and two more shlokas very quickly i'll uh, explain shariram vasu vijnanam vasah karma gunan asun guruvartham dharaye dyastu sashishya ma itarasmata so everything that belongs to him the sense shariram this body vasu the property that he possesses vijnanam his own knowledge vasaha the clothes that he wears karma all the activities that he performs even the prana or the very life prana vasah karma guru guna nasu guruvartham dharay all these things he should sustain only for the sake of the only such a person can be called as a shishya and it says sa shishya na itara otherwise he cannot be called as a shishya that's what it says and also it says astika dharma shila cha shilavani vaishnava shuti gambhira chatura dhira shishya ipatihiye astika he should have belief in the vedas in the, in the supreme lord dharma shila he should engage in performing the duties that are given to him shilavan good character already explained vaishnava shuti hi so shuti hi is he should be clean this is once again very very important because this shuti itself is known as achara and that has to be explained in great detail i am not going to that because it says panchendriyasya dehasya buddheshcha manasas tatha द्रव्य देश क्रिया शुद्धि आचार सो शुद्धि शुचि आर क्लेनिनेस ऑफ ऑल दीज थिंग्स इज नोन एज आचार एंड शिष्या हैज टू प्रोसेस ऑल दीज थिंग्स क्लेनिनेस ऑफ दी फाइव बॉडी विच हैज फाइव सेंस ऑर्गन्स द बुद्धि द इंटेलेक्ट द माइंड बॉडी एंड द्रव्य देश क्रिया प्यूरिटी ऑफ the things we use purity of the place where we live and purity of all the activities actions we perform this is one big one big book can be written on this based on this shloka itself because what is purity in action what is impurity in action what is purity of the place where we stay what is impurity so this can be expanded into a big book actually so much of information is condensed in this one shloka so that is what is mentioned by the word shuchi hi gambhiraha he should have a good countenance chaturaha he should be intelligent dhiraha he should have enough dhairya strength such a person is known as ashishya so these are the qualities that ashishya has to essentially have and if he doesn't have it has to be inculcated in him or he has to slowly or slowly try to inculcate all these qualities and this was what was shown because who else than the supreme lord himself to show how a shishya has to behave having all these qualities so shishya nai ninna de shishya nirit kumirup maatta ariyame are atte arivikke ka and it is not an ordinary thing to have all these qualities it's a very great thing probably even if two or three among these qualities are there in a shishya it is a great thing nowadays <clears throat> so since ordinary people like us are unable to really understand what the nature of a shishya has to be the supreme lord himself incarnated as a shishya or a disciple and showed it to the world that's what this sutra says so with these words i conclude today's talk <clears throat> any questions feedback observations discussions most welcome swami uh, thank you for excellent class um regarding lord's compassion yeah why is there any explanation given by acharyas as to if the compassion is so first of all why does the lord have compassion if there's any there's a difficult question but if the lord has compassion why does he allow us to suffer in samsara <laughs> a very good question so when the lord krishna explains in the bhagavad gita what is daivi sampad 
it is specifically mentioned that daya bhuteshu mm, so compassion <coughs> with regard to it not it's not with regard to human beings or animals or anything he says bhuta essentially refers to a being so daya bhuteshu means to compassion towards all beings he is one of the main characteristics of daivi sampad and when the good qualities of lord rama are mentioned in the uh, valmiki ramayana one of the most important qualities is it says vyasaneshu manushyanam drisham bhavati dukhitah so when he saw a person who has some kind who is undergoing or experiencing some kind of misery immediately a sort of dravi bhava as it is called in sanskrit he used to just uh, melt <coughs> and try to help them overcome the misery so this compassion is one of the unique qualities of a good person and therefore it is the lord who has compassion towards all of us but the earlier question is a very important question if he has this compassion then why does he actually make people suffer initially that's a very very important question very uh, deep question which is answered in the shri bhasha with uh, as you know the classes are going on <coughs> this question has no very very specific answer at this point because the specifically the question is raised if the supreme lord has compassion for us why does he create a new a universe which is full of misery does he do it for himself or is he doing is he creating this entire universe and giving us what we know what we what is called as karana and kalebara that is the body and the sense organs mainly these are given to the lord given by the lord to the human beings so that we all can meditate upon him perform dhyana etc and then attain him so vedanta deshika says specifically in the daya shataka he says achidi achid avishishta jantu navalokya pralaye jata virveda karana kalebara yogam vitarasi prishashailanatha karume so he personifies the quality of compassion in the supreme lord and he personifies her the quality to such an extent that she is made a consort of the lord so he says vrishashailanatha karune tvam so he addresses her as the compassion of the lord and he says you you are actually feeling bad you are having remorse rather because he says pralaye jata nirveda but one thing is very difficult to understand that is what i am going to explain now as an answer to your question <clears throat> so then he gave it seems that the compassion of the lord gave us the sense organs and also this body so that we would worship him and attain moksha but why did we separate from the lord that is a very big question and why this creation occurred that is the question which is na prayojana vatvadi ni prayojana vatvadi kana this question is raised and the answer given is loka vattu leela kai vanyam why did he do like that what is the fun in giving trouble to somebody and then liberating him? so earlier we were all one with the brahman all all the jivatmas were one with the brahman in such a way that the differentiation or the distinction between the jivatmas and paramatma would not occur then he made a separate he said it says that bahusyam pradaya he wanted to become many and he manifested into the form of jivatmas then all the jivatmas take uh, become uh, they uh, come to experience different types of sorrows then he gives compassion and uh, he shows his compassion on us and then he tries to take them back to him. so what is this uh, fun what is the fun in doing that the answer given is no kavattu leela kai vanyam so he says it is the leela of the supreme lord then what is leela 
the answer question is raised the answer given is swayam prayojanam vyaparo so it's a an activity that has no other result but the activity itself is the end there is no it is not a means to something else and the example given is we used to see in our young uh, when we were young of course now <laughs> those types of games do not exist when children used to see uh, some sand we also used to play that game they will build some temple or house or something like that in that sand so sand used to be just uh, available uh, when buildings used to be constructed so we all used to some two three children will get together and they will build a they will say this is a temple this is a house this is something 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 and when they are about to leave from that location if, if it's 6:30 or 7 when twilight happens they will just destroy all the things that they have done and they will go so why did you build and why are you destroying it's only a matter of creed or something like that or thing and it is said swayam prayojana vyaparo or i used to mention when we used to play cricket i was when we were young we used to play some games so it's not some world cup where you get some prize money of some 10 million dollars and you become very famous or something you play for the sake of happiness so it is mentioned that the supreme lord also does as part of his lila as his happiness so my acharya used to mention it means that you cannot understand what it is <laughs> it's an enigmatic question for which no answer is there and then he used to mention so many a times we feel that when we see the lord we want to put the question to him why did you put me into so much trouble and then why did you liberate but when we have when such a person has the vision of the supreme lord he will forget all the doubts all the questions that he has and he will just start enjoying the beauty of the supreme lord or his greatness or whatever it is so there is no the specific bullet point answer is there is no answer to this question we cannot understand why it happens i mean very very well answered so me thank you very much for this i i was i was waiting to hear this it was very good uh, uh swami she krishna has mentioned to us and i am mentioning it no 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 i i remember this very well when she case we talked about this i remember this very well and he he added uh, one small point then when will we know the real uh, the real uh, uh, secret of creation then he says that for big acharyas always uh, always they, they say oh Uh, you know did you create uh, me to realize your greatness right <laughs> once they realize god so in other words he mentioned this verse vidyate hrdya grantihi chidyanti asya samshaya ha tasmin drishte paravare so only when you realize you all these doubts of creation or any doubts of such sort, such sort will be completely destroyed so wait for realization so your your job is to do re- realization or do sadhana for it that's all You're absolutely right. Thanks for the input. Uh, Keshav Das, do you any 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 observations? Uh, Swami, um, two things. I'm thinking it's very difficult to be a shishya. <laughs> of course. And so <laughs> I, I'm just wondering uh, if it's possible for anybody these days. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. here um if it's possible to actually come up to the standard of being a proper shishya and uh if that ultimately matters to a prapana if that ultimately matters uh because uh, of course we try but uh we may fail to come up to the standard of being a proper shishya so still we should have faith that uh, god will save us no uh so i guess it's not really a question it's just a comment the other thing was uh, i was looking at pb anangacharya's sarata dipika on this and and he says that in the for the fifth chunika he says that uh, the lord it, the lord uh the lord gave the tiru mantra which is the essence of artha panchika so maybe you could just explain how the tiru mantra is the 
it may be a big topic, but uh, it's the essence of Artha Panchika. Yeah, I have explained it in the beginning. And also it is going to be explained in great detail because what in the first uh, Om itself, the Akara, Ukara and Makara. So Akara refers to the Supreme Lord, which is uh, going to be explained in great detail in the text itself. And uh, Makara refers to Jivatma and the U refers to the relationship between the Paramatma and the Jivatma. And then it is, uh, so you have three aspects here. That is the Jivatma and Paramatma and the relationship between them. And then further the details are explained. Namaha and Nara and Naya. So what is Namaha? What is Nara and Naya? So you have the um, Prapyasya Brahmano Rupam in A. In Praptusya Pratyagatmanaha, that is the nature of the Jivatma in Ma. And Praptyupayam is going to come in Namaha. And Padam Praptehe and Prapti Virodhi are going to come further. So he is going to say, Samsari Hedakti Virodhi, Shatrupida, the Hedl Apex, Shitam Manapara, the Hedl Umukshuk Virodhi, Samsara Sambandam Apex, Shitam Paramapara Prapti, Uttarkum Nitirkum Virodhi, Kainkaria Hani, Apex, Shitam Kainkaria Virti. So all these things he is going to mention in detail. So since it is going to be mentioned in the text itself, I have not, uh, I have not mentioned that in detail. Here. So thank, thank you very much for all the quotes from uh, Vedanta, Vedanta Deshka, Nyasa Tilakam, and uh, I think uh, Nyasa Vimsadi is by Manavala Man Munigal, no? No, no, no. Both, both are both, are both by Vedanta the... Deshka. Okay. And, uh, and also the Dhyasatakam. So you've given us a lot of homework here to go and yes. look at those things and to... Uh, yeah, it is quoted by Swami Manavala Mamani only in the uh, commentary. So as I said, there was a lot of synergy between the Acharyas and uh, no question of any, any person engaging in any type of uh, derogatory terms or anything like that. So this is one aspect that needs to be stressed today. Yeah, I agree. There's, there was no Kalai bash, bashing uh, in those days. Yes, so, yes. Yeah, everybody was uh, on the same page. Yes, I yes. I agree. So thank you very much. With the Mangala Shloka, I will end. Achet drama nujet tesha chatura chaturakshari kamavastham prapadyante jantavo hantamadrishaha punyam ho devikasaya papadvan takshayaita shimana irabhut bhumo rama nujadiva karaha kani krutavirincha dinirang pushavibhutayaha amam japadam ho de samashrena shalinaha